Hello and welcome to my sabbatical talk. My sabbatical took place winter 2020. The title, Archive Interviews, Capturing the Oral Tradition of Dr. Maria Montessori's Discovery of Children's Ability to Self-Regulate by Designing the Environment for Focused Attention. I have 12 audio recorded interviews and corresponding transcripts conducted during the 100-year Montessori Centenary Celebration held in San Francisco in 2007 with AMI teacher trainers. AMI stands for the Association Montessori International, the international accrediting body located in Amsterdam. And since AMI teacher trainers embody an oral tradition and represent the highest authority on Montessori theory, the content of these interviews represent vital information for future generations not available in published form. I began the project by contacting the IRB at OSU to review the legal agreements signed by the participants of this study, as well as the scholarly communication librarian and the digital production unit supervisor for digital preservation. I then began listening to the audio recordings and rereading the transcripts. Over 100 years ago, Dr. Montessori observed the conditions that promote focused attention. And as a result, children were transformed. They achieved spontaneous self-discipline, self-regulation. And even now, over 100 years later, few people understand the significance of this discovery. As anyone knows who have ever lived or worked with young children, they are not very good at regulating strong emotion. And now because of fMRI imaging, we know the anatomical reasons why this is so difficult. Young children have not yet developed the architecture in the brain to support their ability to regulate strong emotion. While I was listening to the audio recordings and editing the transcripts, I also began to reread articles and books from my dissertation literature review on focused attention and its relationship to self-regulation. We know that the development of self-regulation begins in infancy, but it is during the preschool years when the most dramatic growth occurs. What is not well known is the research conducted by Mary Rothbart and Michael Posner and colleagues from the University of Oregon on the development of attention and its relationship to self-regulation. According to their research, successful regulation depends on the efficiency of the attentional system and considerable considerable development happens in this neural network between the ages of two and seven. Because of that, they recommend a systematic training of attention. I contacted them to see if we could meet to discuss their research. I wanted to know if my interpretation of their work was accurate. Michael Posner invited me to meet in his office where he affirmed my understanding. According to Montessori, these are the conditions that promote self-regulation. Concentration is the key. Opportunities for purposeful work integrated into the life of the community. Activities that are chosen freely and that are based on personal interest. Those activities must also have a balance between challenge and skill. Here is a picture showing Montessori principles that promote concentration. One of the easiest places to begin is in the kitchen. When we provide motivation for activity and we increase challenge and develop skills, we become aware of too much challenge equals frustration, whereas not enough challenge equals boredom and often disruptive behavior. Chicksite Mahai's research is mentioned several times during these audio recorded interviews. Although his work focused on adults and adolescents, his main subject was the transformative power of concentration and its impact on optimal development, happiness, and creativity. He has said that his work was eerily similar to Montessori's work, 
because they both focused on the power of concentration. I decided not to archive the interviews at this time. There is a bigger story that needs to be told. Although I learned a great deal about the archival process, ethically, it just didn't feel right, which I was not expecting. Given the nature of the interviews and the participants' candor, vulnerability, and the trust they placed in me, I don't feel comfortable releasing them at this time. I also wondered if my original plan to archive the audio recordings and transcripts was chosen because at the time it seemed like the easier path. Was I actually avoiding the better and more difficult decision, which would be to summarize and synthesize the valuable information in these interviews into a more readable and published form? Thank you for your time. I look forward to your questions and your comments.